When the cutter's finished, you can peel off the plastic from the cutting mat and find your designs all here. And it's very easy to peel them off and use them. They will be cut perfectly. I have my fabric to be printed on a smooth piece of plastic and I'm going to get it all wet. That way I can move my paint around on the fabric before it dries. Now I can lay my cut out vinyl pieces on the wet fabric. Notice there is no sticky on this vinyl. It's just a table, uh, tablecloth plastic from the utility section of any fabric store. The print that it has on it of lace has no bearing on the finished product because it is the non-porousness of the vinyl that makes our mark. I'm going to start painting with the lightest color and I'm going to paint right over my vinyls. Notice that the vinyl is not actually preventing the paint from going underneath it and therefore is not a true stencil. What it is doing is preventing the water from evaporating underneath it. As the water evaporates from underneath it, it will carry the pigments around to the outside and therefore make a lighter mark where the vinyls are. Sun is not needed for this process. It's frequently called sun printing, but it really has nothing to do with the sun. It's evaporation and capillary action that makes the print. The freshly painted fabric, the colors will tend to blend together as they dry and they will dry lighter. This is just the base layer. I will be putting many other layers on top of it. It's very important to let it dry flat and undisturbed. We do not hang it to dry. We do not need to put it in the sun. It just needs to dry flat and undisturbed. After the fabric's completely dry, I can lift up the vinyls. And notice how it is lighter underneath where the vinyls lay on the drying paint. I can stitch around this and get a nice little background seaweed. Same with my fishes. Good start to some little fishes for the background. I've chosen a dark blue thread to stitch in a little bit of details with the fish. I'm going to add some more color later after I take it off the sewing machine. To accentuate the sun printed fishes that I have stitched in, I added a little bit of iridescent medium to the bottom. And I'm going to use colored pencil to bring a little bit of the warm colors up to the top. You have to be aware that color pencil is not very permanent unless you use a very expensive brand. This is Crandash and it is, uh, the brand is Luminance. They're very expensive, but they are guaranteed to be permanent. If you don't have those, at least use um, Prismacolors and consider applying a protective spray. I'm going to use this Lutrador 25 non-woven material to make a large form for the background. I'm going to use a hot knife to cut holes in it, and then I will paint it with some transparent paint so it's semi-see-through. To use the hot knife, it's very simple. You place your material on a fireproof surface. This is on a metal dry erase board, and you just hold it like a pencil, and you melt a channel in between the pieces of material that you want to remove. So after cutting an entire dry erase board full, I will lift it up and move it over to another area. I can make as big of a thing as I want. And I'm getting a very, very erratic, irregular edge, which is what I want. Here's the cutout Lutra door, 25 in place. I'll probably paint it a little bit to make it a little less white, but I want it to be subtle because it's the background.
This is the cutting file in the software. I'm going to enlarge it so it is 12 by 24, which I can simply do by stretching out the design. If you notice the little square there, that's kind of the middle. So we'll place that uh, towards the edge of my first mat. And I will make this longer because I can. And that is ready to go through the machine. I'm going to use this piece of non-woven to cut a very large piece of coral on the cutter. I have taken a, a two foot by two foot piece and cut it in half vertically and I will run it through on two separate cutting boards. I'm going to make a little registration mark at the top so I can match these up after they're cut. The two pieces of the non-woven are attached to two different cutting mats. Uh, so the registration marks line up at the top. I will cut the same design out, uh, one half on one side and one half on the other side. Join them together after they're cut. I have the right side of the shape tacked down with the fusible. And you can see how perfectly it meshes up with the other side. I'm going to take my scissors and snip away some of the extra overlap before I fuse the left half. Here's the overlap here, and I'm going to trim away some of this excess on the top, um, to paying close attention to the things that are straight, because we don't want any straight lines in here. Ready? Here's the first layer ready to stitch. I did not fuse down this overlap because I'm going to stitch this shape first, and then overlap that on, fuse it, and stitch that on top. I painted the non-woven and a novelty mesh that I found. Um, a similar color and non-woven has fusible on the back and I just cut out some frame shapes freehand no need for the cutter and I'm going to lightly fuse them to the non-woven and then I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to snip the mesh back so I have about a quarter inch left with fusible on that can adhere it to my surface and also uh, the edge of the novelty mesh is covered up. After I have these shapes cut out I can arrange them on my quilt top as I please and I can use little scraps of the non-woven to make stems. I have a model batik here and I can move these cut out frames around on the batik so it forms a natural pattern for the fish darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. Now the fun begins. I have my stitched background. I'm using heavy duty felt as the batting and the backing. And now I can start putting on all the little fellows that I have assembled. Here's one of the fish that I have cut out. Look, a mistake. Presto. Fixed. So I have the grouper school all laid out on the background, ready to iron down. I tend to work from the top to the bottom in these pieces because then I can overlap easily uh, with things that are already in place. They are ready to iron down. Notice how I have a tiny bit of fusible around the edges of the design. There is no fusible on the fabric itself. So I have a more flexible quilt top. So I have my painted dryer sheets and I have fused them and they are ironed onto a Teflon sheet. It's very important that you cut on a fireproof surface. Do not cut on a paperback fusible without removing the paper first. Since I have stuck it to this Teflon sheet, it's very easy to cut because they won't wiggle around. So I'm going to use this heat tool available as a wood burning tool at any hobby store, or you can spend more money and get a soldering iron at the hardware store. And all I'm doing is using it to melt a channel through the dryer sheet to the background. 
and you can see I can get a very, very irregular edge that's real hard to get with scissors. I can also distress it a little bit, make poke holes in it. The reason I'm using dryer sheets is look how irregular they are. One of my favorite materials. You can also do this with any other kind of synthetic non-woven. So I have my cone shapes cut out. They're still stuck on the mat. And I'm going to use a little bit of liquidy fabric paint and a small brush to darken the bottom of these cones. This will give me greater depth when I layer them on the quilt top. Here's a little units all overshaded. I'm going to add a little bit of light color after I stitch them on the top to accentuate the 3D. Look how easy it is to layer the pieces on your background. Start at the top with the smaller pieces and overlap them slightly. And just keep going downward till I get the effect I want. I could build myself a very nice coral with beautiful colors and shading. Here's one way of stitching down the non-woven frames. Notice I went outside the lines. That's okay, you can go outside the lines. I ran uh, one or two lines of stitching around the inside of the frame and kind of did this texture stitch on the outside to make it look more natural. I don't have to stitch in the middle here if I don't want to, which I'm not going to. Notice there's no fusible inside. Only fusible is on the edges here. <laughs> Here's my super non-fancy machine. It is on a track, but it is a stretched Singer commercial machine, and it's got a regular darning foot. It does not have a dedicated hopping foot, so it limits my visibility. When I get up here, I'm going to switch threads and stitch this fish down, and then I will overlap these little branches and stitch on top of that. I'm going to use this piece of heat distressed felt that I made earlier and painted. Uh, notice I backed it with some fabric so you don't see through a contrasting area. Um, and I'm gonna use it for one of the rocks on this piece. So I'll place it down here and I left the little roots from the coral so they can grow over it and make it look like it's growing out of the rock. And I'm just going to hold this down with a little bit of um, Elmer's kids glue, washable kids glue. There's not fusible in the layers um, because I think that having a lot of fusible layers makes your whole work really, really stiff. So I use as little glue as possible. I have all these little elements prepared. Seaweed leaves, fish, more seaweed more fish, lobster. I can also take a picture of it, put it in Procreate on my iPad, and I can draw all kinds of details on top. For instance, I'm planning on having the green seaweed come up all the way overlapping all these guys on the right-hand side. This saves me a lot of work as far as making the elements that go on here um, because I can just make enough to go on and not a bunch of extra. Well, here's the floor, the sea floor, and I think I have room for an eel coming out of this coral mass over here. So, parchment paper makes really good tracing paper, so I'm going to draw an eel using that. Here's his head. I'm going to make his second half coming out of the coral. 
and then use this as a pattern to cut out some fabric for him. I have this wacky piece of silk that I printed a while ago, and I think I can use part of this for the eel. I can take my paper and put it over and position the pattern just the way I want it. 